Hi ladies, so I'm going to be taking you through making um, reusable sanitary wear. Um, you've been sent pre-cut pieces, so I've sent you a small pack of six items to be making uh, a range um, and you'll understand as you start to do them why I've sent them to you like that. So you will have a couple of small ones and the reason these are the easiest to do and I would suggest starting with them is that they don't have an absorbent layer in so it makes lining up and sewing your top layer a lot simpler it will just get you used to the flow and how they work um, and then you'll get a couple of medium ones that again um, we class as a daily because it hasn't got an additional absorbency layer and then you will also get some through that do have this white layer this is called Zorb this is the absorbency so I'm going to take you through making and we're going to include the Zorb in the sample that I show you but obviously it depends which one you're doing as regard to flow um, as to whether you've got one or maybe two absorbent layers or whether you're doing a daily that is none okay just so you know what we're doing so your first thing to do is to stack your top layer and if you're using them your absorb absorbency layers are sandwiched in between now the key thing to take into account on this first bit of sewing is is this central down your pad and i can see from this that it's just a tad over to one side so what you're trying to do is get in this running centrally down your pad and just to help stick a pin in if necessary the other thing is you can see at the top i have got the zorb you can only just see it um, and i'm just touching the edges on um, the top layer the bottom you can see you can still see the zorb but if you watch what we do as I start sewing, by the time we get to the bottom, that top level will have stretched out. So there is a method to the madness. Now, if you run in two lines of stitches, you've got two options here. Two parallel lines or a zigzag, okay? I'm going to start, I think, with the zigzag. Most people will find that easier. Now, what we want to do is line this up so we are just on the actual layer rather than going off the side okay so I'll show you once we've got this stitching on. now you may want to take this slow to be able to keep your control sorry I'm a bit of a speed freak so as you can see the top layer is stretched now because the top layer is stretched, my other suggestion is when you start down the second side, start at the top again. Don't try and come the opposite way, else you'll find it starts to twist. And we have enough fun and games with the layers without making it harder for ourselves. So start at the top. So when you stitch down and you'll see there that we have some left at the side that could be trimmed back if you wanted to we're just about even down but even after all that I can see we've fallen a bit to this way so we'll have to correct that as we go the main thing to point out is how that has now stretched 
But one thing I'm gonna do at this stage is just trim back a little bit of the Zorb because it will make life so much easier when we come to join everything together because the Zorb gets in the way. And again, on the other side, because you're gonna be stitching in um, your other layers so it doesn't matter that we've trimmed that back out of the way because it will still get sandwiched in when we join everything, okay? So the next thing to do here would be, okay, I thought we had things in stages, we don't, we're sort of a bit out. So the next thing to do will be to layer up. So, they're not, they're all in different things. Um, sorry, just talking to Hannah. <laughs> Um, so the next thing you layer on is your other inner outer layer. You'll notice on the instructions, inner, outer, pull, absorb absorbency layer, top layer. Okay, so when you then put your pull on, you'll see your pull, it's got a shiny side and uh, feels a little bit like a fabric side. Make sure your fabric side is sticking up. It'll make things a lot easier when you sew, okay? Now, at this stage, it's probably going to be a good idea to pin, put some strategic pins in. So one needs to go in the top. And what you're doing is you're making sure your zorb is enclosed under your top layer is in place okay now we're also going to be coming down here can you see there it's sort of very slightly gathered that so it's going to need a bit of teasing to bring it back where we want it so what I'm going to do is pin the top ideal world ideal world it would be all lying flat and all of those edges would line up together so we're going to pretend they do so we're going to start here now what we're actually going to do is go all the way around and we're going to leave this um, uh, end open for turning through Ooh, take it off zigzag that would help Okay, so the, the better you get at it, the more you're going to want to try and make sure that this is all uniform. So what we're aiming for is going down straight line and doing a 90 degree, 90 degree turn here so that our wings are properly shaped. Now what I'm then doing is I'm making sure all my edges together and very gently pulling on it just to make sure that everything's stretched out. I don't want you to tug so hard that you break your needle. I want you to put a little bit of pressure on it. So I'm holding it quite tightly here to keep the fabric stretched out so that as I, I come up to my curve, all of my edges are still together. Then I'm gonna trust myself on the curve to do a nice uniform curve round. I'm going to be a bit more generous on that top seam allowance just to make sure everything is caught in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm lining my corner up again. And then I'm going to work from there to hope then that that curve is staying nicely curved because my aim, hopefully, uh, that's it, is to get so that I've got the foot running along the side of the fabric. Then I'm gonna come down far enough that I can do a 90 degree turn into my wing. Try not to sew the wing in. So all of my pieces are all still lined up. 
So I'm going to go to about a foot width from the end. Make sure I'm all lined up. Now when I say lined up, at the moment I'm lining up my pieces. What I'm not doing is worrying about whether my check is lined up. We will come to that and hopefully, miraculously, when we turn it round, it will be pretty even. But don't worry if it's not, it takes practice. And part of it is trying to keep an even seam allowance and curve. Now I know where the pin is, has definitely got all of my layers. Because the key thing is to make sure that that top layer is going to be caught in at this stage. I should got to go back. But the other thing is we only just want to catch the Zorb layer because the Zorb layer is going to make a lot of thickness when we turn it. So that's our ideal. And then we're going to try and make sure, again, that our curve is going to pretty much match the first one so that as we're coming down we're back uh, about a foot's width away from the edge. Now on the last curve we're coming straight off. You might want to do a forward and back on that. And if we look on the wrong side we keep our fingers crossed that we've got a fairly even curve there. If I was being pedantic, I would just take a shave off there to even it. And again on the other side, and again, it's the way we curve um, that we might want to come back like this and just balance that curve out ever so slightly. If we do that at this stage, when you open it out, it's not going to look odd, basically that little bit of balance in there saves us having to worry about it later. So just for consistency, I'm just going to do the same thing here. And I think over time, your curves will get a lot more balanced and you'll find that your curves balance without you having to do this little tweak. Um, it's going to be practice on these ladies. Okay. So once you've got everything joined, fabuloso, we're then gonna trim away a bit of excess to make it easier to turn in. So we're gonna cut as far as we dare on the right angles, but we don't wanna go all the way, otherwise it's going to um, make a hole. Then we've got to go back and repair. Then we're just gonna do a little bit of cutting away a V on our bit and I would also go as far to say take off that excess sorb because it's going to get in the way and again on your next curve take away any excess sorb you could also take away the top layer as well if you really want to or make things easier for turning in right into the right angle on the corner you're just gonna take away the surplus there and again this will then give you nice pointy corners don't know if there's a technical term for pointy corners but you know what I mean again Check your sorb. You may or may not want to cut off all of your loose cottons but they're going to get hidden inside anyway so now we do the magic turn so what we're doing we've got three layers but we're going to turn our here it's tartan our inner and our outer through So 
I'm going to start off by just easing into the curves and just double checking that we've caught everything in. If we haven't, then at this point you need to turn it back in and sew a little bit further if you've got anything missing. Okay. Right into that curve. It doesn't look very pretty at the moment. It will do better once we've done our last stage. So if you can see our curves are pretty even. We've got a pretty even um, amount of fabric on each side of our top layer, down the sides. And if you feel that, because of the way we've trimmed the zorb, that isn't too thick to be sewing over. So next stage is literally to just turn in on our open wing. Try and get that as even as you can all the way round. You may or may not at this stage want to just stick pin in or not. And then we are literally going to top stitch now all the way round to hold our shape in place. Now, you may be a bit thick on your corners, just give it a little bit of encouragement there. turn right way it'd be a nice neat on and if you can see we are just following our edge round This is the thickest bit, particularly if you're doing um, a heavy flow where you've got two layers absorb. Quick forward back on the end. we go I made sanitary wear so that shows you if you're doing two lines down rather than the zigzag which is an option and I haven't got a finished one. Oh, hello yeah. yes I have I've got one here um, so the next things that would be done on it, it would be sewing your size labels. First one is your body size, i.e. extra small, small. This is a medium. We do also do large, extra large. And the second one there is the flow level. So 
S is a small, is a daily flow, no absorbency level layer in there. You've got the absorbency from your top layer. Um, then a medium would have one layer of absorb um, sandwich between and a large would have two layers of absorb and a large is for a heavy flow. Um, the media, the one layer is for a medium flow. So they will suit then most people and they can do different combinations depending on their body size and their flow. Okay, thank you very much.